In this corncast, we're going to be given three points, and we're going to be asked to find the quadratic equation that goes through them. We're going to find the particular equation of the quadratic function containing the given ordered pairs, 3, negative 9, negative 2, 21, and negative 1, 11. And we're going to write our answer in standard form with function notation. Before we continue, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite our function notation in y equals form. Now before we get into the process of finding this equation, let's go ahead and graph our ordered pairs and see what we get. Now I use the list function of my calculator to enter in my points. In my first list, I entered all my x values. In my second list, I entered in all my y values. And then I use the scatterplot function of my calculator to graph those three points. And if you'll notice, there's a slight curve to those points, so a quadratic model fits these points pretty well, I would say. Now the big question is, how can I go from three points to a quadratic equation? Well, I need to use what these points give me. And the only thing these points give me are x values and y values. So each one of these points has an x and a y value. And then if we look at our quadratic equation in standard form, notice what we are given here. My equation has both x and y values. So now I need to decide what can I do with these points and this equation to help me with my goal. Well since that we have an x and y value and our equation has x and y values, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute our ordered pairs into the equation. Since we have three ordered pairs, we're going to have to do this three separate times. And so for my first point, I know that my x value is a 3 and my y value is a negative 9. So I'm going to substitute these values into my equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to y. So now to substitute my ordered pair into this equation. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to substitute a 3, and wherever I see a y, I'm going to substitute a negative 9. So that's going to leave me with a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c is equal to, well, my y is negative 9, so equal to negative 9. So now it's time just to simplify our equation. Well, 3 squared is 9, so leave me with a times 9 plus b times 3 plus c is equal to negative 9 and 9 times a is 9a. 3 times b is a positive 3b plus c is equal to negative 9. And before we go on, I'm going to add a coefficient of 1 in front of our c. Now to continue, our x value is negative 2 and our y value is 21. And again, I'm going to substitute these values into our equation in standard form. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to substitute a negative 2, and wherever I see a y, I'm going to substitute a 21. So that's going to give me a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c is equal to 21. And now to evaluate this equation, I know that negative 2 squared is a positive 4, 4 times a is 4a. Negative 2 times b is negative 2b plus 1c is equal to 21. And finally, repeat the process, x value of negative 1 and a y value of 11. Substituting those values into our equation again, wherever I see an x, I'm going to substitute a negative 1, and wherever I see a y, I'm going to substitute an 11. So that's going to leave me with a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 
plus c is equal to 11. Simplifying this equation, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 times a is 1a, negative 1 times b is negative 1b, plus 1c is equal to 11. Now let's take a look at what we have. We now have three equations with three unknowns. Each of these equations has an a, a b, and a c. So since we have three equations with three unknowns, we now have a system of equations that we can solve. And now to solve the systems of three equations with three unknowns. I'm going to use matrices. So I'm going to create a 3 by 1 matrix equal to a 3 by 1 matrix. Now if you recall, we undo the matrix multiplication process to get a coefficient matrix. So all the coefficients, 9, 3, 1, 4, negative 2, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, times our unknown matrix, which is going to be A, B, C, which is going to be equal to our 3 by 1 matrix, negative 9, 21, and 11. And now we just need to solve this matrix equation to find A, B, and C. So to solve this matrix equation, we need to left multiply both sides of our equation by the inverse of our coefficient matrix. So on the left hand side of our equation, we know that the inverse of our coefficient matrix times our coefficient matrix is going to give us our identity matrix. And again on the left hand side, the identity matrix times our matrix ABC is going to give us our matrix ABC. So now that we've solved for our ABC matrix, the only thing we need to do is find the inverse of our coefficient matrix and multiply it to our negative 9, 21, 11 matrix. I'm going to use technology to help us out with that. The first thing I did was I typed in my coefficient matrix, then I'm going to have the calculator find its inverse, and then I'm going to multiply it to my negative 9, 21, 11 matrix. Pressing enter results in 1, negative 7, matrix. So my solution for my ABC matrix is 1, negative 7, 3 matrix. And now let's take a look at what we need to do with our solution. We know through matrix equality that my A is equal to 1, my B is equal to negative 7, and my C is equal to 3. Well, we know we started with an equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we know that our unknowns in this particular situation were a, b, and c. Through our process of substituting our ordered pairs into our quadratic equation standard form, and solving a system of equations, we are able to find a, b, and c. So one final substitution into our equation gives us y equals, well, a is 1, so 1 times x squared, plus b times x, well, b is negative 7, giving us negative 7x, plus c, which is 3. So we now get an equation in standard form that should go through those three points. So finally, let's rewrite our y equals to function notation. So we're going to get f of x is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 3. And this is our equation that should go through those three points. Now I'm going to graph my function into my graphing utility, and I'm going to check to see if my points do lie on the graph. So if you notice, I have my scatter plot on my graphing utility, and I've typed in my function x squared minus 7x plus 3, and now let's graph it. And by appearances, those points do lie on my graph. 
but I'm not entirely convinced. I want to make sure they are, so I'm going to trace along my function. So I'm going to go ahead and trace the 3, and sure enough, 3, negative 9 is on my graph. Tracing to negative 1, well, negative 1, 11 is on my graph. And finally, to negative 2, and negative 2, 21 is on my graph. So indeed, these three points do lie on my graph. Now the nice thing about this corn cast is I was given three nonspecific points. For example, none of these points are the x or y intercepts, and none of these points are the vertex for this particular parabola. So the nice thing is, is that I've been given three nonspecific points and I was able to find the equation that goes through them. Once I have my equation, I can now find important pieces of information. For example, I can find the lowest point on the graph, or the vertex, by completing the square. I can find the x-intercepts, and I can do that by using the quadratic formula. And the last thing I can find is I can find the y-intercept by letting x equal 0. So, just by giving three points, I now can find a plethora of information, and that's pretty powerful stuff.